Okay, guys, it's 8 o'clock. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, do we have any, any prayer requests before we, we get going here? The Wilkes family, for those of you who haven't heard, Bob passed on Thursday and has gone to be with Jesus. We don't have any information on a, the memorial service yet, and as soon as we do, I will let everyone know. But yes, we need to be praying for the Wilkes family. Anyone else? What are, what are what are the options? What, who are the leaders right now? And he, looking for a, a, a swim scholarship or? Well, we will be praying for the, the best decision. Anybody, anybody else? And it was Gary or Larry? Larry. Larry. S- Steve. Rona victims. Wayne, do you have something? Okay. All right. Well, and any of you at home, just throw your prayer requests out there. What We're going to pray for you as well. Father, we thank you for the ministry of prayer that, that we can gather as, as, as men of the church or just as, as, as Christians, and we have full access to the throne of grace, and we have the assurance that you not only hear our prayers, but you answer them. Oh, in faith, Father, we do pray for those who are mourning. We pray your word over them that says that they will be comforted. We pray for the Wilk family. I pray for my friend Mike as he is going through the passing of his wife today. Father, we lift up those who've been mentioned that are um, fighting the coronavirus and uh, the many thousands of others across our country that are also fighting corona. And we pray for uh, Larry and uh, his, his issues. And Lord, we pray for wisdom for, for Steve and his son as they decide where uh, he's going to go to college. Father, we pray that you would give them uh, just the absolute assurance that the decision they're making is coming from you. As we do, every time we pray, Lord, we lift up our nation. We pray for revival. And we'd ask, Lord, that you'd be with us now as we spend time in your word and in fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, thanks for joining us here tonight as we get to uh, get near the end of our reading through the Gospel of John. Next Monday night will be the end of our Gospel of John reading. What you, what you received today in your email, if you already got it, uh, is the last uh, reading through the Gospel of John. And if you don't have it, guys, it's on your table, and the rest of you can get it at blastandcast.org. Uh, just scroll down to the, on the main homepage, just scroll down and you'll see where there's a link for the Gospel of John reading. So just a heads up on what we're going to do next. We are going to do Proverbs next. We're going to spend 30 days, there are 30, 31 days, there's 31 Proverbs, reading through Proverbs, which is going to take us to the week before Christmas. Then the reading, the daily reading, the week before and the week after Christmas will be very Christmas-specific readings, not all from one Gospel. And then starting the second week of January, we're going to take that first week off for the Blast and Cast event down in Rockport. And then starting that that, that first full week in January, we're going to be doing a study through the book of Acts. So that's what's coming up in our future. I mentioned the Blast and Cast event. I want to invite any of you that have never been to a Blast and Cast particularly event particularly to uh, consider joining us down in Rockport. It's uh, the first weekend in January first full weekend in January. We have an awesome time. You can go to blastandcast.org. Uh, just scroll down a little bit. You'll see events and you'll see our, our Rockport event there. Uh, excellent time for ministry. This is the perfect place. It is intended for you to bring someone who's not a Christian so they can spend some time with some Christian men in the field and hear a, a very practical presentation of the gospel. We usually see men baptized down there. We've seen a lot of decisions. God does things when men are together in the field and have that common experience. So I really want you to consider that if you've never done that before. All right. 
So tonight we're going to go through John 16, verse 16, all the way through the end of John 18. So last Monday, November 1st, we find Jesus telling his disciples something that they really struggled to understand. What he says to them is, says, a little while and, and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, see me because I go to the Father. And the disciples are like, what? What is he saying? And Jesus knew, because he knows everything, he knew what they, the scripture said, what they wanted to ask him. So he tells them a bit, uh, tells them something, but he does it quite cryptically. Uh, he says, you'll weep and be sad, and, and, and the world will rejoice. What's he mean by that? Talking about his death and the resurrection. So the, the world will be glad because, because he's dead, and, and, and they'll be sad, and then after that... Uh, your sorrow, he said, will be turned to joy. That's a reference to the resurrection. Uh, then, he, then he had asked, he says, in my name. And I asked you, what does that mean? Did anybody come up with an answer? Look, what, what did you come up with, Steve? Okay. I'm going I'm to repeat it so the people at home can. So he's saying when you pray in someone's name, you're speaking in the authority given them. The, something, there's a very important transition that's going to happen here that Jesus is bringing out. And he's done this a couple times. So all the prayers of believers in the Old Testament were accepted upon the account of a mediator who was typified that means we get a picture of with the temple and the ark with their solemn, and their solemn worship was, was performed by, by, by priests. But the explicit naming of Jesus or even God was not part of their normal prayer requests. So Jesus, when he was glorified, when I use that word, that means that he has been uh, cre uh, cremated. We just had a conversation about cremated. When he was buried and resurrected, and then 40 days later he ascended to heaven, that's when he was glorified. When he ascended into heaven, he became the mediator pointed to by those Old Testament types that we see with the temple and the ark. So that's why he's in my name, because now he is that type, that temple. He is that ark. He has become that mediator. He's making that shift now from that Old Testament system to a New Testament system. And that's why we have this reference here, in my name. There's never been this in my name instruction until just this part of Scripture. And that's because something's about to change. Everybody with me? So the next day, I asked, uh, what uh, you will be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone. What's that about? Anybody? They're all going to run. So this is going to happen uh, when Jesus is arrested, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about, about that uh, here in just, just a minute. And he's going to, uh, all the disciples are going to flee with a few exceptions. Um, but something interesting here, he says, they will all be scattered, but he won't be alone. So everyone leaves, but he's not alone. Who's with him? Holy Spirit, the Father. So abandoned, but not alone. In verse 33, it says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. What's that mean? What's that mean to you? Anybody? Say that again, Wayne. Over, he's overcome sin by overcoming the world. What about you will have tribulation? How many of you find that to be true? That's it. So, so you're going to have troubles in this world, but you're not living for this world. We're living for what's beyond. That's very well, well put. Any other comments on what verse 33 might, might mean? All right. From here we move into chapter 17. That was the end of chapter 18. This, is, this whole chapter is Jesus' prayer. 
we have a, a, a prayer in the Bible in the New Testament that's often referred to as the Lord's Prayer. And I don't think that's a very good title for it. It's probably better titled, titled the Sample Prayer because John 17 is the Lord's Prayer. And I'm going to read John 17 because I, I, I want you all to hear it as one and I want those at home to hear it as one. But as I read, I want you to uh, see the, the flow of John 17. He, he first prays for himself and then he prays for his disciples and then he prays for all believers. Uh, and before I read it, uh, I had three questions for that day. So that day's reading, whatever day that was, November 3rd, uh, was the whole, whole chapter. And the three questions were, what were the implications of, of verse 5, um, which is uh, the glory which I had uh, with you before the world? And the implication there is that Jesus is the creator. Remember, John's point is showing the divinity of Jesus. So that's why this is in here. The other question was, uh, what was verse 12 talking about? And, and that said, I haven't lost any except for the one that was pointed so scripture could be fulfilled. Who are we talking about? No, no, no. no. Judas. Judas Iscariot. He, he's the one. Yeah. And in verse 18, I also ask you what that means. Uh, it says, as the Father has sent me, so I have sent you. What does that mean? Fishing trip? Spread the gospel. All right. John 17, verse 1. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now that they have known that all things which you have given me are from you, for I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I come forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost, except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Now, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who are at First Baptist Church of Seabrook this Monday night, who will, be, who will believe in me through their words, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, and that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world, O righteous Father. 
The world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name and will declare it, that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. John 17, the prayer of Jesus. Yeah. That's the Lord's Prayer. And then from there, obviously, the next chapter, John 18, we start going through. And now we get to that great scene where Jesus is arrested. And now I asked, in, in, uh, the, the question is, uh, it says, why did those, uh, did I write it down for you? They drew back, it says, they drew back and fell to the ground. So here's the scenario. All the troops are coming. It, it says the troops that the Jews have got, they're coming. Judas is Iscariot is with them. Jesus kind of steps out in front of them and says, who are you looking for? And they say, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus says, very specifically here, I am he. And it says they drew back and fell down. Why? That's the, that was a perfect answer. That's the name of God. So that I am, we go all the way back to Leviticus, I think is where it first comes up. I am that I am, the tetra, whatever it is called, uh, that ends up being pronounced Yahweh, and that's how Jesus responds. So why did they fall down? See, there's nothing, to, it's, it's not like Jesus did something and they, they, they fell. Now, remember, we, last week I actually read seven I am statements. This is the culmination. And it's separate from those seven I am statements. When Jesus said, I am he, what he was saying is identifying himself as God, Yahweh. There is some debate on whether the soldiers there had any idea about who the Messiah was or God or any of that and why they may have fallen down. It could have been his power or his authority. I read one story when I was going through this that was pretty cool on some martyr way back in the day that was in jail, and I wish I could remember the name of it. But anyway, they had sent the executioners to get this guy out of the jail, and he was even blind. And the executioners opened the door, and they turned around and ran and couldn't because they said uh, his aura was so holy that it just got true story i mean true historical story that might be what happened here we the vocabulary when you go through the greek uh is a little iffy on, on exactly who fell and it says they drew back not fall back uh and there is a lot of false doctrine that comes out of this right here uh, on uh, slaying in the spirit this is kind of the root of of, of that um but it says they drew back and fell, and the actual fall, when translated from the Greek, is it was fall to worship. So it was more in awe, not passed out, because the Holy Spirit, you know, on them. That, that, that's not what this is. His glory? Could be. This is one of those questions, and the reason why I asked it is to give some of you an opportunity who like to study to, to try to study the answer of this because you come up with some very interesting answers that are extremely well supported. So uh, I'll let you know the exact answer when I get there, but there's some real fun scripture here. Uh, but the important part is, I am. Well, Judas was there, but he hadn't yet identified him. You notice here in this scripture, now, because you, you know the other Gospels as well, that Jesus has not been identified by Judas here. That occurs, we get that reference from another one of the Gospels. So they might not necessarily know who he was. And Ju Judas, so in John, hasn't pointed that out. So the thing repeats itself, I'm he, and then Jesus sacrifices himself. He says, I'm, take, take me, arrest me, and let these guys go. So his disciples uh, take off. And then uh, the troops bind Jesus, and they take him first to, to Annas, who's the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest. You remember what it was that, that Caiaphas, the high priest, had said just a few chapters ago, the, the prophecy of Caiaphas? But who remembers what that was? What's that? 
one should drive, die for the whole nation and a little more of that, and they would think that's a bad thing. It actually is going to turn out to be a really good thing, and it's going to affect the, the whole world. So that Caiaphas, uh, what, was the, what does Jesus mean when he says in verse 11, uh, oh, this is when, oh, yeah, Peter. Well, I can't, can't uh, hold back on, on Peter here. So uh, when they go to arrest Jesus, Peter jumps out, pulls out his sword, and cuts off one of the Roman soldiers' ear. The guy's name's Malchus. Uh, kind of important because we're going to run into it, one of his cousins here in just a few minutes. Or I say cousin, the Bible says relative, so uh, we don't know exactly what the relationship was. But cuts his ear out. Jesus sticks the ear back on, not recorded here, but in another gospel it is recorded here that Jesus puts the guy's ear back on. And P Jesus turns to Peter and says, do you not want me to drink the cup that my father has given me? What does he mean by that phrase? Yeah, why, well put. Why stop me? Are you trying to stop me from doing my job? I just did this whole long prayer here about what well, I'm going to do what the Father sent me to do, and now you're trying to stop it. So this is all playing out exactly how it's supposed to play out. And Peter in his flesh, it, he's just being Peter, just cut, cutting off ears. So uh, then Peter follows Jesus along with another disciple. Who's the other disciple? John. Any, what, how, what else does John refer to himself through this gospel? Anyone remember? The, the disciple whom Jesus loved? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to actually run into him in, in this another disciple uh, reference again when they go to the tomb. Uh, he doesn't want to identify himself there either. So this is John. And then we see in verse 17, Peter's first denial of Christ. And then we get to the next day. Verse 22. So now the beating starts. It gives us a reason why the first officers hit him. Anybody catch what that was in your reading? Hmm? So the Bible, the scripture there, I believe in about verse 22, 23, gives, gives us a reason why the first soldiers hit him. He was being what they considered to be disrespectful. And then he, Jesus is like, well, what did I say that wasn't true? And, that's a, and then in verse 25, one of Malchus's, that's the guy whose ear was cut off, one of his relatives, one of his kin, sees Peter and says, hey, didn't I see you in the garden? And Peter says, wasn't me. And that becomes the third time that Peter denies Christ. What happened next? Rooster crows. Why is that important? That, that, that Christ told him what was going to happen. Yeah, three times before the rooster crows. All right, so now we're going to leave there, and we're going to go to the courtyard of the high priest, uh, from the courtyard of the high, high priest Caiaphas, and we're on our way now to the Praetorium. What is that? Headquarters. Uh, it used to be the term, it used to be generally, it was, it was uh, a, where guards were um, at, at, a, at a fortress. You, know, you, you would have a big fortress, and the end part of it would be where the guards were. That was the Praetorium. It has come to mean here um, Pilate's Palace. And also the place of judgment. And it says then that, that they come to the praetorium where Pilate is. And we're going to have this interchange with Pilate next when we start next week. But it says that the Jews wouldn't go in. Why? What's that? So why is that important right now? In, in this, this scripture, why is them defiling themselves this day important? Right before the Passover. So what would defile them? New day, yeah. Well, we're not going to open up that can of worms. But uh, what what would defile them? So, as part of the Passover ritual, the Jews would go into their homes and they would take out anything that had what in it. Leaven, and this is a Gentile home, and there's leaven in it. So, the presence of leaven would it mean that they could not participate in the Paschal or, or, or the, the, the Passover that was to come. That's why that, 
that reference is in there. We're, we're getting a time frame here because we need a Passover lamb that we're going to see here in just a minute. I want to finish tonight by reading the last part of John 18. So I'm going to read from John 18, beginning at verse 33, and we'll close tonight. Then Pilate entered the praetorium again, called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, Are you speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you this concerning me? And Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? And Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And Pilate said to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. But you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Do you therefore want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Then they all cried again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. John 18. What is truth? The best answer is a man named Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for taking us back through the Apostle John to those events before the crucifixion and burial and the resurrection. It's easy for us to go through our, our, our day to day and forget what's transpired on our behalf. Father, help us come to know the truth that it will set us free. Bless our bodies with the food we're about to receive and our fellowship together tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Because Bob Wilk has gone to be with the Lord, tonight's dinner is in his uh, honor. It's his favorite dinner, which is brisket and ribs. So we're having brisket, ribs, cream corn, barbecue beans, all that. The uh, donation bucket is out there because brisket and ribs is not the cheapest of meals. But as you eat tonight, think of Bob. <laughs>